Hey guys, so I've had this lens for about a year now. It's been with me through pretty much everything, whether that be a quick hike in nature or even the two months backpacking trips through Europe that I did earlier this year. Uh, this is the Tamron 28-75 and in this review I'm going to tell you how amazing it is, obviously, and some of the drawbacks. In addition, I'll have dozens of sample photos that I've taken over the last like, you know, 10-11 months. So yeah, without wasting your time, let's just get right into it. So to start this off, like I do every, you know, lens review that I do, I'm going to talk about the size and weight. Obviously, this is a pretty big zoom lens, but it's not stupidly massive. You know, this isn't going to weigh you down substantially. It's not like, you know, using a massive, like, GM lens or something like that, or, you know, 100% of effort went into making it, like, sharp and amazing without any concern for size. But, <laughs> yeah, this thing... I think it weighs about 19 ounces, which I want to say is about 550 grams for metric users. And it measures a little bit less than five inches down, but not extended. And it gets another, I'd say maybe inch and a half and it is extended. So it's not that bad. I found, like I said, I went to Europe for two months and I was mostly, you know, just shooting street photos. And this thing did feel a little bit big sometimes, but typically I didn't feel like I was weighed down by it too much. Um, partially thanks to the fact that this my a7 III, which is recording this video, it could fit in my Peak Design sling pretty nicely. So when it did start to get heavy, I would just put it away for a few minutes and, you know, give my hands some time to recover. So not as big as some zooms, but definitely not super compact and lightweight either. And then as far as build clarity goes, I think it's mostly made of metal, like the lens barrel here. Uh, the grips are big and chunky and they are rubberized so they have good grip. You're not going to like, your hands aren't going to slip on these or anything like that. The focusing wing does feel a little bit cheap, but I think it's because you're not, you're not necessarily going to be using it that often considering this is an autofocus lens. And then on that subject, when I bought this lens, it didn't come with any lens hood. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, but when I looked on the Amazon listing, I didn't see like a lens hood included with the picture. But it's just kind of strange. I think like every single lens I've ever bought in my life has come with a hood. So it's just kind of strange that this doesn't. But in any case, that doesn't matter. It does come with front and back caps. Obviously, I'm missing the front cap. <laughs> um, and then finally, it is weather sealed to a degree. Um, when I accompanied it with my a7 III, I've shot in super rainy conditions. Uh, two especially come to mind. The first day I was in Europe, I was getting out of the train station in downtown Lisbon and the skies just opened up and started like dumping rain on me and I was like, oh no, my brand new camera is going to be destroyed. Um, but no, surprise, surprise, the a7 III and this lens, I mean, they got soaked, but I had no issues, like, you know, no focusing problems or anything like that. And obviously I'm still using it to this day. And then another time, actually quite recently, a couple of weeks ago, I was shooting at a pumpkin patch with some friends and it was like a violent, freezing rain down because I live in Wisconsin and I took the camera out and it did just fine no issues so the other ceiling pretty fantastic on this thing when you accompany it with a suited body next up let's talk about the actual images this thing takes because that's what everybody cares about uh, like I said I have a ton of sample photos so I'll just be putting up a bunch of pictures on the screen here as I speak so yeah let's get started at 28 millimeter the you know the end of the zoom range we actually do get pretty soft corners when shooting at f2.8, but they do sharpen up as you stop down. That was a little bit disappointing for me as someone who likes to shoot a lot of, you know, wide angle landscapes, like, you know, near sunset and whatnot. Um, I was hoping that the corners would be a little bit sharper, but like I said, stopping down, you know, it still looks good. And then midway through the zoom range, let's say at about 50 millimeter. Uh, you'll see pretty much the same performance with slightly better chrono softness and then once again when you stop down it just looks fabulous and then finally at 75 millimeters is where the lens i've found absolutely shines um, even at f2.8 the entire flame is just like laser sharp from edge to edge i don't know why but yeah like images just look fantastic at 75 millimeters so yeah speaking of that actually the bokeh that this lens produces is actually pretty good. It, it's not like an f1.8 lens. This isn't like a dedicated portrait lens or anything like that. But you are going to get pretty good subject isolation and background though. And I put a couple of bokeh samples up on the screen here. Um, I did actually end up using this to take a lot of portraits when I was in Europe because this is the only lens I actually bought with me. 
So I put some of those up on the screen here now, and you can just see how the Boca, it's not like incredible, but it's definitely pretty good considering how versatile this lens actually is. So images, you know, look pretty good, especially when zoomed in a little bit and stopped down. What about optical anomalies such as distortion, CA, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, pretty good, actually. Despite, you know, shooting at 28 millimeters, distortion is actually pretty, pretty minor and I haven't run into any issues with it. You'll see a little bit of bending like in the corners of the frame, but it's easily fixed with a single click in Lightroom or Photoshop, you know, whatever you use. Vignetting, on the other hand, is decently strong when shooting wide open at f2.8. Uh, again, it's easily fixed a bit in post-processing, but you do, you know, you do risk adding a little bit of digital noise as you push up those edges, the shadows and the edges a little bit. And then finally, chromatic aberrations and flaring no issues. I mean, I've shot this thing directly into the sun and I've only gotten like minor ghosting in the most extreme cases. So yeah, I mean, the the lens isn't perfectly flawless. I know the G2, the newer edition of this lens, um, they fixed a lot of the sharpness issues when shooting at 28 millimeter. But yeah, I don't really have any complaints. I mean, as you can see through the sample photos I've been putting up on the screen through this review, it looks pretty damn good no matter what. So yeah, it's a win for me. I'm definitely happy with the image quality given, you know, the fact that this is a zoom lens after all. Now next up, let's focus on focusing. That was bad. Anyways, so autofocus on this lens is pretty good. It's not like a GM lens again, but I haven't had many complaints with it. It's super fast, dead silent, and you know, IAF, you know, subject tracking like AFC, that sort of thing work amazingly. Um, I've been using this as my main lens for video since I got it pretty much. Every single video on this channel, with the exception of the first few and this one obviously, I actually shot on this lens, so that's kind of a testament to how good it is. Um, but yeah, there's honestly not much more to say about focus. I, I think the only thing I have to mention is when this lens first came out, video autofocus was terrible, and then they released a firmware update to fix it. So if you end up buying this lens used, you can save a lot of money buying used. If you end up buying it used, make sure you just check for, for a formula update if you're having issues with video focus. So yeah, by the end of the video here, if it isn't obvious, I love the Tamron 2875. Like I said, I've had this thing for about a year and it's just been fantastic for me. So who exactly is it for? Um, I would say anybody who's looking for just a good versatile zoom lens that isn't going to break the bank. And that's the key right there. Like, yes, you could get the 70, 24 to 70 and just have like a godly lens, right? But you're also going to be spending a lot on that. This thing, I think nowadays you can get it for like 600 or 700 used. I have the GVN, the first edition, so it's actually even cheaper on the used market. Um, so yeah, you can get it pretty cheap or you can buy it new for, I'm going to say about 700 to 800 ish. And then the new edition is like 900. So yeah, it's just a fantastic, like kind of budget friendly lens if you're just looking for a lens that can do everything. Like if you're going to buy a single lens for your camera, this should be it. So yeah, that pretty much sums it up guys. If you're looking to buy this thing, I do have an affiliate link in the description that does support the channel. Obviously I get a little commission for it so I can keep doing more reviews like this. But yeah, besides that, if you like this video, please feel free to like it and even consider subscribing. And that's it for today. Thank you so much.